Puerto Rico is facing a very difficult time. Puerto Rico has been a loyal ally to this country. Puerto Rican by the thousands have died in every war. Puerto Ricans die hoping that someday the democracy that we have fought so hard for can someday say you have earned the right either to be a member of the United States with full-fledged benefits, no longer second or third class citizen, because we're American citizens as of 1917, when this country needed additional soldiers to go fight in every war we have had. And let me say this, in the Iraq and Afghanistan war, more Puerto Ricans have lost their life and only a country with three million people have lost their life more than the state of New York who has 18 million people living in it. Is that right? So I say, people have asked me, white, black, and Latino, what is it you want for Puerto Rico? I say, well, I want respect for Puerto Rico. No offense meant. I want Puerto Rico to be treated like you, the United States treat the great state of Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East. Every time Israel sneezes, we give them a couple additional billion dollars. No offense, they deserve it, they're not democracy. But Puerto Rico right now is bankrupt. We owe somebody, I don't know who, $73 billion. Everything in Puerto Rico is owned by corporate America, Wall Street. We own nothing from the hotel to all those beautiful shopping mall. And all the jobs that were created were less than minimum wage. When I was fighting in the city, convincing the fast food operator like McDonald, you gotta increase the salary to $15 an hour. That is not the case in Puerto Rico because we're not, we do not do what we want to do. We do what we're told what to do by Washington, D.C. That's got to stop. Either you make Puerto Rico a full partner, either you make them a statehood, or you better give me liberty, or you're going to give me death. You hear me? There are people that are falling in the wars, like Anthony Suarez, Sancho knows Anthony Suarez, he was a proud U.S. captain in the U.S. Army from 1974 to 1988. He's now practicing law in Florida, Orlando, Florida. He called me yesterday, Jose, give me an idea, what should we do? It's simple, you and I will tie ourselves to the chain in the White House and we will demand that they give all you statehood and statehood. And if they put us in jail, I know you're going to fight for freedom. Okay? Oscar Lopez Rivera is in jail, a Vietnam War veteran, with really decorated with medals. And when he came back home, he heard what Muhammad Ali did. Obama, or like Muhammad did, said, I ain't going to no war. Those brown skinned people never hurt me. It's people in the South that always put a hurt on me. Because of Scott Lopez, he ran out there to say, uh huh, then I'm going to struggle for freedom. Or Scott Lopez, he ran out, was like George Holtz, bringing programs to our community. He helped unite. Chicago community, Mexican, Dominican, and Puerto Rican, they're united. That's the reason why, even though that area is majority Mexican, they elected a Puerto Rican Luis Piaje to be congressman. Because in unity, there is strength. In building coalition, there will be victory. I stand here and I'm gonna end it this way. Yesterday when I left Albany, I spoke to Annette Robinson. But let me finish. Oscar Lopez Rivera, because 
He fought for freedom. He never hurt anybody. He didn't sell drugs. He's not a drug trafficker in the, in the community. If they were to treat drug traffickers in our community the way they treat Puerto Rican freedom fighters, or spokesperson for freedom, independence, you wouldn't have no drug dealing in our neighborhood. Oscar Lopez has been in jail for 34 years simply because he has said, give me freedom or give me death. Oscar Lopez is almost as old as I am. He's 72, I'm only 78. But we go strong by what we believe and stand for. And I'm gonna end it this way. So when I was in Albany yesterday, had a conversation with Annette Robinson, and we were discussing, she showed me, a list of pictures of people that the U.S. is considering replacing a face, Jefferson, in the $20 bill, with others. I said, we have to start a book bit. It is time that we also honor no longer anyone who were formerly slaveholders, like George Washington and the others. It is time that we honor someone who really paved the way, was a soldier, a loyal one to Dr. Martin Luther King, but it is time that we put the $20 bill the face of the one person that really, when she said, no, I just got out of work, I am tired, I will not move back to the bus, and my name is Rosa Park, and I'm here to be respected. That's who we should put in the face of the $20 bill, Rosa Park. Because if I speak this way, I'm gonna end it here, George. Because in 1955, Puerto Ricans, when we used to go on a day like today, this weekend, to Orchard Beach, New York finest for our protection, they were, con they, were, they were concerned about us. We were directed to Section 1 in the rocks. That became, from Section 9 to Section 1, you got to walk maybe a little bit more than a mile. All right? to Section 1 in the rocks. That changed after people began to watch what was happening on TV after the 6 o'clock. What Rosa Parks did, what Mega Evers did, that he campaigned, let him campaign so that people can register to vote. Let a campaign that wants me to register to vote, the people that look like me and speak like me with a New York Rican broken English accent can register and actually run for office. My name is Jose Rivera. I'm also a man. And we're going to continue this struggle. You made my job a little not difficult. You are giving me marching orders. By the end of the day, I will put the statement of our public advocate on YouTube because more than that, she mentioned my name three times. <laughs> Have a nice day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Jose Rivera.